caucus to break that out properly. Here we lucked out, we were in the middle of the hole, and so it makes it relatively easy to bust. And then the piece that you have left over, the piece you have left over will fit right here for the next cores, because this brick here, as you can see, the next cores coming here will fit so in this case we can use both pieces and you can see where that will work oh nice right so here works out well okay hey dad um here we have the uh box filled in what we did is we um filled the mailbox completely in we filled it with brick and block and cement so that it's totally solidly and completely in there is that right yeah it's all locked in now uh, we're getting ready to set the capstone uh, we're gonna put a piece of flagstone people could do what's called a roll lock is that right where they just set yes, the brick you on could top do the same part here with your brick however you have to stand them up like this uh, if you're gonna go bricks it would look something like this on top and then you come around here here and here and then fill the center with bricks the reason we're using the flagstone is it weathers much better than a cap made out of bricks Let's see it's much harder in the winter time on the joints at least here in Colorado and uh, so we find that using a capstone, not only does it look good, but it's also very weather tight. Okay, so um, we'll come back, we'll uh, lay hey, the uh, we stone on. We got the um, capstone on. Um, so let me focus in on the bubble. So uh, we got it level on each side? Yes, uh, we go across this way, then we turn around and go across this way. If you want to, you can let it down one side or the other so the water travels off. In this case, we have a level going both ways. Then, taking and spacing it out on all sides, we have about an inch and a half overhang. So you took the rule and you made sure there was an inch overhang on each of the sides. Inch and a half. Oh, inch and a half. And then we'll come along and we'll go with a trowel and cut this off here, flush just like this okay we'll we'll go on all four sides here flush it out bear in mind these joints here we still have to rake them out we'll rake like we did earlier then they can rake that, that out it. now um, this is a very thick stone it's three inches um, as we said earlier they don't need to have a that thick of a stone what's the no. minimum thickness they could go to uh, for a pier this size you probably want to be around two inches inch and three quarter to two inch and three quarters to two <laughs> inches and then generally you want an inch and a half to two inch overhang overhang so when when the moisture <clears throat> rain or snow and it begins to melt it drips off it does not come down the side of your wall it drips straight off and doesn't stain your wall all right. We have the uh, pier over here totally complete. Now there's one last step in washing it down, and we're going to wash it with 600 detergent. I'll focus in on that. Why don't you show um, what you put in the five gallon bucket? You put in. Basically, we have about an inch since we don't need an awful lot for this. Put a very I, tiny bit, I right? I put about an inch of the 600 in, and then we'll get the hose here. We'll get the hose here and uh, fill it about quarter full. And now, <clears throat> the reason why you don't want to put too much of that cleaner in because it's strong stuff and it can burn the brick, is that right? That's it, and then we're dealing with concrete here in front. Uh, you notice in front of the mailbox uh, post there is uh, there's concrete. What you want to do is you want to uh, let the hose and the water run there pretty good. So it you dilutes don't burn it, right? This concrete. Wherever you have concrete, you want to be careful with the 600 that you don't end up burning. 
And now, uh, do you worry much about the grass? The grass tends to stay pretty well. No, I, the solution is mild enough, and as I wash down, I'll wash down each side, and as I wash it down, you got this I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have Garrett bring, bring the hose here with water. Your grandson, or my nephew. Yes, and we'll, uh, we'll wash it down immediately. As you can see, it's fairly, fairly potent stuff, but it does take care of that light gray film that you see on mm -hmm. this side versus this. All right, you can already see it kind of, so, the brown and the little gray kind of already coming off. Exactly. And then you try to get it with water pretty quickly after that, so you avoid yes. any type of burning, is that right? That's it, and then it dilutes it right away by the grassy area here. I see, but so then you don't have to worry about the grass. There you have an idea, and you just do that to every side, and should, you should be fine. And now what about the actual mailbox, the black mailbox? Well, do, should there they brush I'm, I'm going to be very careful uh, when I wash around it. Uh -huh. I make sure that I don't get too much on it. This has baked uh, enamel on it, uh -huh. so what I do is... I go around very carefully. I don't want too much of this 600 hitting it. I'll do it here. And as you notice, I'll do over the top very last. Mm -hmm. Then I take the water immediately and wash it down. So you get it real no, quickly. There's no chance of this discoloring. Any type burning. And it's best to always read the instructions um, on Prosico or any type of masonry cleaner because it's always strong stuff. Here it is. I'm going to focus in on it. So they can see it's 600 detergent by Prosico. We've had pretty good luck with it, but you just got to read the instructions and be very careful with it because it can burn real quickly. Is that right? Once you have an acid base. It, generally, we always say like 20 to 1 water to the Prosico. And we've had pretty good success with it um, as, far as, as far as cleaning and getting it all off. Now, do you have to worry about the flax stone on top? That's the very last thing I wash down. Okay. Uh, you notice I do all the four sides uh, first, and then I'll get the stone last, and then rinse everything off real good again. You know, just be very liberal with the water, right? Use lots and lots of water. Yes, and then you won't get in any trouble with... You don't want to burn either the uh, masonry joint or the bricks themselves. Okay. And uh, acid, of course, will attack metal in a hurry. So whenever you're working around your aluminum mailbox uh -huh. or the metal one like here, you want to be careful and get water on there quick so you di dilute your... 600 because we've had some emails on the website people using pure muriatic acid and oh, and, and then they get burns yes and exactly. then it, that all that good work they do gets kind of destroyed yes so now we have all four sides taken care of now i'll i'll go ahead and get the top flagstone piece any reason like you like to do the flagstone last well Flagstone is kind of touchy when it comes to using the 600. And uh, this way, I always work from the bottom to the top because when you do the top, you spill onto your four sides. Mm -hmm. And I want to get that off right away. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to wash it off, exactly. then, then you dilute the brick. Because That's the water's going to come See? down because you want to wash it down real quickly now. Yes. So we don't stain the mailbox or the stone or the brick or anything. So everything is right here. Everything should be nice and clean now. So now we have a nice clean brick mailbox and all ready for the mailman to enjoy. Is that right? We hope he does. <laughs> or she. Yeah, that's right. Excuse me, mail person. Excuse us. Yes. <laughs>